Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Madeline and I have been living here in England since the end of last year. During my time here, I have noticed that I use different words that mean exactly the same thing to everyone else. And also my pronunciation on certain words are quite different as well. Sometimes the choice of words is a little bit embarrassing because uh, they mean something else here and yeah <laughs> we'll get into that one later. So I know Australia does use British English for spelling but we have a lot of American influence so that might be why we have totally different words. I don't know I can't confirm 100% on that one. So when you look online for the differences between Australian, British and American English, you always find lists where the Australians only speak in slang words. We don't. <laughs> It'd be a bit weird if we went around having an avo in the arvo at the server, you know? We don't all say slang words all the time, it depends on context, but it's funny that a lot of the online articles say this is definitely how Australians speak. <laughs> Since Australia is so massive, we also don't agree between the different states on certain words. For example, to me, it is a potato cake. But in other states, it is known as a potato scallop or a potato fritter. But now seeing the word potato fritter, it sounds more normal and is probably the right word. But since I grew up with potato cake, I think it will always be a potato cake to me. Speaking of potato cakes, I can't find them anywhere in the south of England. I don't think it's a thing. I know it is a thing up north, but I haven't found them yet down in Kent. So please help if you know anywhere that sells potato goodness. I miss it. Anyway, that is just one example of how Australians don't agree in terms of language. We have a little bit of state rivalry going on as well there. All right, now on the differences of the pronunciation of certain words, I'm not gonna do too many. I'm just doing a few as an example because I'm sure there's a lot and I don't really wanna go through getting all confused. So the first one is, which I would say as data, but I know here it is data. Also related with this one is what I would refer to as a router, but here it is a router. And in Australia, we say router because router sounds rude. <laughs> so we tend to avoid saying that. So I think that's why router is the most commonly used word in Australia because it just sounds wrong to us. Um, but having said that, I wouldn't say route for like going somewhere. So other words, I would use root, but router just sounds wrong to me. <laughs> Moving on. Next one is, which I would say as pergola but i've heard by watching garden shows here it is called a pergola um, when i first heard it i was like what's that and then they showed it on the screen and i'm like oh it's a pergola i've never heard it called a pergola in my life but here we are it sounds really cute and i think i like it a lot better than pergola. <laughs> On to the word differences. Now I'm going to start with the most famous one because why not? <laughs> we would call these thongs in 
the UK they are known as flip-flops so I actually looked up the word where thongs originated from and I found that America and the UK used to use the term thongs but it changed in the 70s 80s um, to be known as flip-flops because of the bikini that got more in fashion at the time. I think we didn't change it because it was plural, like thongs on your feet and a thong bikini. And um, you don't wear multiple thongs as a bikini or as underwear, you only wear one. That is the main difference between the two words for us at least. Also, the word thong for underwear is becoming more popular. It is sometimes referred to as a g-string. Woohoo! Okay, next. So this next one is what I would refer to as runners, but here in the UK they are known as trainers. And I've started changing my language with this one because I don't run. This next one is another shoe. It is what I would refer to as gumboots and here in the UK they are known as wellies or wellingtons. I really need to get a pair before winter. I ruined my last pair of winter boots because of all the mud in the park. This next one is what I would refer to as chips but here in the UK they are known as crisps. Also with the fried chips we call them chips or hot chips and here they are known as chips. So now we've got what I would call pants. Here they are referred to as trousers. Pants in the UK refers to your underwear. So this is what I would call a truck. Here it is known as a lorry. So this is all about swimwear. Where I grew up in Melbourne, they were referred to as bathers, short for bathing suit. Um, but elsewhere in Australia, they are also known as togs, as swimmers. And for men, they've got board shorts, budgie smugglers. But we also use the term bikini and one piece for women as well. Here in the UK, swimming costume, cosy or trunks for men, also the use of bikini and one piece. Then we have which I would refer to as a zucchini but here in the UK it is known as a courgette. Zucchini is based on the Italian I think and courgette is the French word I think. I think that's right. Also vegetable related. This one is what I would call a capsicum, but here they are just known as peppers. This next vegetable for me is known as an eggplant, but here it is known as aubergine. So this last vegetable is actually one of my favorite vegetables and it is the butternut pumpkin for me, but here it is known as a butternut squash. I love it. No matter what it's called, it is tasty. So this is what I would call a highway or a freeway. Here in the UK, it is referred to as a motorway. Although we don't have the word motorway in Victoria, we do have M roads like this M80, the M1, um, a few more that I can't remember right now. I don't know, we just don't use the motorway even though we have the M label. Who knows? This one is coming up on Monday and it is what I would refer to as a public holiday but here in the UK they are referred to as bank holidays. So this the next one is what I would refer to as an icy pole or a Zupa Dupa, which is a brand name, but here in the UK it is known as ice lolly. Speaking of lollies, that is what we call these. 
These are known as lollies in Australia and in the UK they are referred to as sweets. And the last sweet treat that I have is what we would call fairy floss. Here it is known as candy floss. This is what I would call a backyard. In the UK it is referred to as garden. This is what I would call a doona. Here in the UK it is referred to as a duvet. Also we call linen Manchester in Australia. I don't know why but if you are looking in the shop for like sheets and stuff it will be labeled under Manchester. This is what I would call a station wagon in Australia. Here they are known as estate cars and I will finish off with what I would call a bottle shop or a bottler. It is referred to as an off license here although I haven't really been to many off licenses because I collect my alcohol while I'm doing my supermarket shop. So I've made it to the end of my list and once again I will say that I have picked up these words just by talking to people locally to me and from watching television so they might not all be right but these are just the differences that I've noticed. If there are any other words that I have forgotten, please let me know because I find these things very interesting. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and also you can subscribe to my channel. I put out videos every week about life in the UK and if you want to follow along, come and join. Anyway, that is all from me today. I will see you in my next one. Bye.